so companies must verify the residue of previous product in case the next product is not the same one and there are multiple ways to understand how much residue is allowable into a next product and we call that term as a maximum allowable carryover or MACO and there are multiple ways in defining this macro value and one out of this many way is general ppm limit i often found companies choose 10 ppm as the limit now this 10 ppm most of the times is considered as the concentration of a standard however it is not the right and in case if you are also making a standard of 10 ppm concentration you need to watch this complete video. So as a part of this video, I will try to explain you how to decide the standard concentration when 10 ppm is the residue limit. Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub and I am on the mission to help pharma professionals to get absolute clarity on various technical aspect just like this one. So if you are struggling with technical understanding or career growth and would like to build an extraordinary career for yourself, join the Pharma Growth Hub today. To know more about the services of the Pharma Growth Hub, join the one of the WhatsApp group of Pharma Growth Hub with help of link given in the description. So what is the general PPM limit you are considering? And you said that it is 10 ppm. It is 10 ppm. So can I express the 10 ppm in another unit? Can I say that the 10 ppm is nothing but 10 milligram per kg? Absolutely yes. The second important point or information you need to have is how to express this macro in case if you are using a general ppm limit approach. And that has been expressed with the calculation formula of MACO is equal to uh, your general PPM limit hmm, into minimum batch size of the next product in terms of kg. In terms of kg. And this uh, general PPM limit must be expressed in terms of uh, PPM or I will say in terms of milligram per kg, which is again nothing but the PPM. And we will end up by getting the macro in terms of milligram. So let us also understand this, how we can get the macro in milligram. Macro stands for what? The maximum allowable carryover of the previous product into a next product. So your general PPM limit criteria is 10 milligram per kg. And let us assume that your um, minimum batch size is 30 kg. Your minimum batch size is 30 kg. So I would first put the general PPM limit, which is 10 milligram per kg, which is nothing but again 10 ppm. And your batch size is how much now? Or minimum batch size is 30 kg. So what is going to be your macro? Look at here now. This this kilogram from your general ppm limit is going to get cancelled with this kg of the minimum batch size and you will end up getting how much 300 milligram as the macro i hope you understand how this macro has got into a milligram as a value now once you understand this macro that 300 milligram of previous product is allowable into the next product but how this previous product is going to be present when you complete the cleaning and this previous product will just get present onto the equipment surface. Equipment surface, isn't it? So this 3 milligram, 300 milligram, if it gets distributed across this entire equipment surface, you are going to say this amount is allowable into the next product. So what information you are looking for now? You are looking for how much is the equipment surface area? 
how much is the equipment surface area and uh, let us say you have a equipment surface area of 1000 decimeter square hmm? how much is the equipment surface area it is the 1000 decimeter square so can i say that this 1000 milligram hmm, can get distributed across 1000 decimeter square surface to meet exact macro requirement to meet the exact macro requirement i will say 300 milligram is getting distributed across the 1000 decimeter square surface or i will just say that the 300 milligram if present across this 1000 decimeter square surface I still able to meet the macro 300 milligram is equal to 1000 decimeter square or 300 milligram present onto the 1000 decimeter square area. I hope you are clear unto this point. The second important point is now how much is the area you are using for swabbing? You are having the swabbing as a sampling technique and I am sure you may be swabbing certain area now. So how much it is and most of the times people swab around one decimeter square area one decimeter square is nothing but 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter so in case if you are swabbing 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter surface you are actually swabbing one decimeter square area so you need to understand how much is the content going to present onto a one decimeter square area provided one decimeter square area is your swabbing place so will you be able to calculate now how much is the content going to present onto a one decimeter square area which is your actually a swabbing area right the one decimeter square is your swabbing area and then you say okay this x milligram is going to become 300 into 1 divided by 1000 so how much is the content into a 1 decimeter square area and it is going to become 0.3 milligram or can i say 300 microgram hmm? i hope you are clear until this point that 1 decimeter square of the area consists of 300 microgram of the residue or can i say that each swab will consist of 300 microgram of the residue hmm? right because one decimeter square is nothing but the swapped area so if the one decimeter square present 300 microgram the same content is going to get carried on to the swab also ideally speaking don't think about the recovery and stuff like that but ideally speaking that 300 microgram will get carried forward onto the swab and hence per swab sample will contain 300 microgram of the residue now we understand once you take the swab now 300 microgram can be the content present provided the content is actually present at the limit level of the macro now the next important question I would like to ask you, are you just going to inject the swab inside the HPLC or gas chromatography? May not be possible, right? So you are going to dilute this swab to certain level, certain volume. So let us say your dilution volume is 10 ml. Your dilution volume is 10 ml. So can I say that this 300 microgram is actually going to get diluted to 10 ml hmm? 300 microgram is going to get diluted to 10 ml and how much is the concentration of this sample now 300 microgram divided by 10 it becomes 30 microgram per ml or i can roughly say 30 ppm can i say roughly 30 ppm assume that the density of your diluent is one so we understand now look at here the sample concentration is 30 ppm even though i have a limit of 10 ppm we began the discussion having with the general ppm limit of 10 ppm approach but end up in getting the concentration of sample is 30 ppm because we need to consider minimum batch size 
we need to consider the surface area during the calculation. Now, how do you prepare the standard solution? And you say that the standard solution, standard concentration is just equal to the sample concentration. Your standard concentration should be just equal to the sample concentration. So how much is the sample concentration? You say it is 30 ppm. So eventually, you also need to make a standard solution of 30 ppm. And how you are going to make the standard solution of 30 ppm now? Standard preparation, I will say 30 milligram, right? Diluted to uh, 100 ml, right? And further, let us say 10 ml diluted to 100 ml. Is that the exact way of 30 ppm preparation? Hmm? Exactly right. So this is the way you are supposed to prepare the standard. But if you consider that the standard should be of 10 ppm, that is not the, the, the correct way of making a standard concentration. I hope you are now much clear on preparation of standard solution for residue method where the 10 ppm is your uh, general ppm limit. So actually speaking, you know, though you talk about 10 ppm as your general ppm limit, your actual li limit in, per in terms of swab is how much? In terms of swab, it is 300 microgram. Per swab, 300 microgram is your limit. Even though you say 10 ppm is my limit with the help of this general ppm uh, approach. You can also say that my limit is 30 microgram per ml. 30 microgram per ml or just 30 ppm is my limit. Now there could be some confusion. Okay, I began with 10 ppm general limit approach and how I got to a 30 ppm limit of for my residue over here. And this is the entire story in front of you. Thank you so much.